have now been riding my 2021 Giant Rain mountain bike for a year, and while I'm still very happy with it, it was a big upgrade from my prior 2016 Giant Trance, I do have one complaint, a lack of sufficient rear suspension travel. This bike has enabled me to ride significantly steeper terrain, bigger drops, and rough, really rocky terrain, where I occasionally hear an unnerving ring of the rear suspension hitting bottom. I have compensated by increasing the pressure in the shock, but that causes the suspension to become less soft and supple. That is, it's less comfortable when riding over undulating trails with rooty, rocky terrain. So while I'm sure to continue riding my giant rain for another year or more, it's got me looking at what bike might be next. So today I'm comparing the 2022 Trek Slash with the 2022 Giant Rain, which is virtually the same as the 2021 Rain. But when someone like Brandon Semenek says that the Trek Slash is the most capable trail bike I've ever ridden, it handles like a downhill bike but still climbs great, then I have to take a look. So I've done a desktop comparison on this bike against the bike I'm currently riding, the 2021 Giant Rain Advanced Pro 29 version 1. Both bikes have enduro caliber bike geometry, as I'll show in a moment. The Slash comes with a number of versions, starting with the version 7 and 8, which are aluminum frame versions with the SRAM NX and GX componentry respectively. However, for this comparison, I've selected the Trek Slash version 9.8 GX, which comes with a carbon frame and similar brake and drivetrain componentry with the Giant Rain Advanced 1. So at first look, I believe the Slash covers all my needs, but let's review just what I am looking for in, in bike specifications. I want a medium sized frame with enduro caliber geometry and other specifications including 64 to 65 degree head tube angle, 75 to 77 degrees seat tube angle, and a minimum of front and rear travel of 170 millimeters and 160 millimeters respectively, and the SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain or equivalent. So let's see how the Trek Slash compares with my current Giant Rain and my minimum specifications. For the geometry, which I've plugged into the Geometry Geeks website, you can see that the bikes compare very closely, except for the slightly slacker head tube and seat tube angles by 0.5 and 0.8 degrees respectively. This will make the bike ride better and have you feeling more confident in, in the downhill direction. It will have a slight cost in leaning too far back while climbing steeper terrain. It will make you work harder for your elevation. The standover height is slightly lower for the slash by about a half an inch. And the rear travel, the big constraint I have with my giant rain, is slightly larger for the slash by 14 millimeters or about half an inch. While this might not sound like much, it's huge. If that extra half inch lets me run the manufacturer recommended shock pressures in all types of terrain, to avoid that unnerving ringing of the suspension bottoming, that's big. Now let's look at the bike components. And here I show a table with the two bikes side by side. The frames are very similar with the aforementioned extra rear travel with the slash. But also note that the slash comes with an internal storage cavity in the frame where you can store your bike tools in the spare tube. This is a nice feature that will allow you to leave the backpack at home. The slash also comes with what they call the knock block, where they have a mechanism in the head tube which prevents your handlebars from full rotation. This will prevent your brake and gear cables from being pulled or stretched when you crash. This is a very nice preventative feature to have designed right into the bike. For the forks, I don't know which one's better. It's between the Fox and the RockShox technology but both forks come with 170 millimeters of travel, which meets my minimum requirement. As for the shocks, it's the same Fox versus Rock Shocks debate, so I'll call that a draw between the two bikes. Let's skip down to the dropper post. Both come with 150 millimeter of travel, but the slash comes with a Bond Traeger post, which has the slightly more beefy 34.9 millimeter diameter. Both bikes come with a SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain, so that's a draw. But for the brakes, the Giant Rain comes with a Shimano SLX with 203mm front and rear rotors, while the Slash comes with a SRAM Code R brakes with 200 and 180mm front and rear rotors respectively. So the Giant has a slight edge with the rear rotor size, but I don't think that's a big factor, so I'll also call this a draw. For the bottom bracket, the Slash comes threaded, so I'll give this comparison to the Slash. Both bikes come with 29 inch carbon wheels, the hubs, and the tires seem very similar, so I'll also call that a draw between the two bikes. So now to conclude this comparison, I give the edge to the Trek Slash for the more innovative frame design, the larger rear suspension travel, the beefier dropper post, and the threaded bottom bracket. Everything else is a draw. And the geometry between the two bikes comes more down to the rider's preference. The geometry is slightly more slack, maybe even imperceptible. 
it should help to rip downhill more confidently, but it'll also come with slight cost while climbing. So it's more up to the buyer whether they want this or not. And now for the prices. The 2022 Giant Rain Advanced Pro 29 Model 1 is listed on the Giant Australia website at $9,299 Australian, which converts to $8,540 Canadian and $6,863 US, using the currency converted as of October 13, 2021. As for the 2022 Trek Slash, the bike is listed at $8,999 Canadian, $6,999 US. So while the Trek Slash is slightly more expensive by $460, Canadian and $137 US, I think the slash is well worth the extra cost given all the improvements mentioned above. I for one will be keeping an eye on the Trek Slash 9.8 GX for my next bike upgrade. However, if the sticker shock of these caliber bikes shocks you, you can find an aluminum frame Trek Slash version 8 which sells for $5,249 Canadian or $4,199 US, which I think is a great value if you don't mind the heavier bike. Well, that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.